got it. So good morning, everyone. This morning, we're going to be looking at this whole issue around dealing with our money blocks and discovering what these money blocks are for us. And um, as I was saying earlier, Karen and I have blasted our way through learning and becoming qualified uh, hypnotherapists with Marissa Peer. So first of all, I have to accredit this technique as part of our rapid transformation therapy training. And it is such a powerful technique, uh, but it's just four words. So I'd like you to write down these four words around your money blocks and starting to think about discovering for yourself what these money blocks are. I'd like you to think about what role money currently plays in your life. And you might think, oh, that's a, that's a weird question, you know, thinking of the role money plays in my life, but it has a role in your life. So what role does it have? So I'd like, that's the first question. And then I'd like you to think about, okay, what function does this money play in my life? Is it, do what does it do for me? So what function does it have in my life? And then when it comes to then the purpose, what's the purpose behind money coming to you? and then money leaving you. What purpose does it play when it arrives with you? Because, you know, if you were to meet a friend and you were terrified every time you met this friend, how would your friend feel? So I'd love you to start thinking about, okay, what purpose does money play in my life? And what intention does it have? What's the intention behind this money coming to you? So I'm going to go to Karen, because of course, Karen's worked with this model before, in order for Karen to share with us what role, function, purpose and intention money has in Karen's life. And as you know, Karen's gone through a huge life change as well. That's probably shifted how she used to see money and how she now sees money. So Karen, can you share with us the role, function, purpose, and intention of what money does in Karen's life now? Uh, for me, the main thing, um, it, it keeps me safe. So by paying the bills, it, the money comes in, it pays the rent, it keeps me in a home, in a place that I can afford to heat, um, puts petrol in the car, allows me to go on there. And it gives me freedom as well. So beyond paying the bills, it allows me to pay for things that are fun, that I can enjoy, and just have a life with. So for me, it's it's it being there in the background, it supports everything that I do. And it allows me to do what I do, because money is energy at the end of the day. It's an exchange of energy. So money comes in and it goes out in different forms. So um, at the moment, money's coming in in the form of rent from other people and it allows me to pay the bills. Okay. Um, but, but those bills are keeping me safe, you know. So I've been very lucky this year that I've been able to manifest an awful more money than I expected. Um, I've been able to pay off the mortgage, I've been able to get a new car and a few other things. So I've been extremely lucky in that respect. But I've also had to learn how to money manage money and to treat money as a really good friend and sort of pay attention to it. So I do check my bank statements every day to know what I've got in there, to know if I need to move money around to make sure that everything is okay. Um, one of the things that I do, <laughs> it sounds really funny, um, I did um, Denise Diffel Thomas's money boot camp, and one of the things that she did, talks about it is decluttering. Because when you declutter, you allow new stuff to come through. And one of the tricks that she has is if she wants to manifest money, she shaves her legs and her armpits because that's decluttering excess hair. Um, so if you ever want to manifest money and you've got, you're putting it out to the universe that you want to manifest money and decluttering and wanting to bring more stuff in, shave your legs and you'd be surprised at how well that works 
just purely from a mindset point of view, it's crackers. But it does seem to work. Anytime I want some money, I just shave my armpit, shave my legs, just send it out there. This is the amount of money I'm looking for. And somehow or other, it will materialise. It's it's actually quite fun. Okay. So it, have you worked out what function money plays in your life? Or have you covered that in what you've just said? I think there's a, there's an awful lot of crossover for me. Um, money was about keeping me safe. Um, there was an awful lot of it wasn't available to me growing up. Um, so I had a huge amount of imposter syndrome that um, I would I know it wasn't for me. It was other people. Um, so I had that whole lack mentality. And, I've, and I was very lucky because I, I sort of had Tony for an awful long time who didn't have that mindset. Okay. He always had a very positive, very goal orientated. And for him, everything was available. So whatever goal he set, he got it. Okay. And it was a huge, huge shift with how he saw things to how I saw things. So it went from having a lack mentality of no, we can't afford this, can't do that. No, it's not for me to actually, yes, it's available to me. I just have to ask for it. Um, and then sort of learning that, you know, money is energy. If you imagine the money was the sea, you know, you could dip a glass in it, a little sherry glass, or you can put in a tumbler. You're not going to affect how much money, how much ocean is left there. You're just choosing how much you want to take out of it. And for me, recognizing that I can ask for what I want, there is always going to be more money. And just because I want a lot more doesn't mean somebody else gets any less. Yeah. If somebody wakes up in the morning and said, the sea's empty, too many, yeah. many people must have gone in it. So thank you for sharing, Karen. So that's quite enlightening for, for you to hear Karen, who's obviously worked on this before. And the word that keeps coming up is, uh, and you can write these down, these might be your words, you know, I've written down, Karen talks about money having a safety role in her life. And also believing, you know, there is enough money there for everyone. And you having more doesn't mean somebody else has less. And the whole um, value structure around manifesting is key with Karen. So it is a matter of looking out there and asking for what you want and knowing that it's going to come, trusting that it's going to come. So we're going to come to you then, Lynn. So what, when it comes to money, what role, function, purpose and intention do you think money plays in your life? What role does it play? I've never really thought about it, to be honest. Um, and a bit like you, I don't really check my my bank statements. I know I should. But I think since, like, since it went paperless, I just don't tend to, when it physically came through the door, I would open it. So I would naturally just look at it then. But since we, you know, we, we don't have these paper statements, I just don't think to look at it. I've always got a rough idea of how much is there. Um, and now and again, if I do pop to the shop, I'll put my card in and think, oh, yeah, that's roughly right. That's, you know, about what I was expecting. So I don't, don't really look at it. Okay. So what function does it play in your life then? For me, I think the biggest thing is is the freedom. Um, being able to, to look after my children in the way that I do, you know, do the school runs, go to the, the, the parents' evenings, go to sports days. So just having that freedom, really, I think is the function and the purpose, I suppose. Okay. And what's the intention behind money coming into your life? Is it all about freedom? It has an intention of giving you freedom? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that's the critical thing when it comes to money. It's looking at what does it do for you? What's the intention this money has in your life? Because we're all not going to be the same. So it's quite interesting, you know, for, for Karen, it gives her safety. For Lynn, it gives her freedom. And it's really an essential you work through, okay, well, what what is it that money does for me? And what do I want my money to do for me? 
because mm. why do I have an intention of looking at my bank statement? My intention is I want to know how I can save money by looking at the bank statement. And then when I look at the bank statement, I know I will save money. I'll find something there. I can stop, delete, or whatever. But when you count up all those 20s and 30 pounds that sort of keep dripping away out of your bank account, I tell you the, the big one for me was one, two, three, um, the uh, website people. The, 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 I had products coming out of my bank statement. I was thinking, I don't have any products for them to have any any other products related to. And I just deleted them all and shut down the whole account because it's amazing how many people might get hold of your card number for one product and then link other products to it. And suddenly there's direct debits going out that you're not missing because it's about £1.50 a month or £2.50 a month. So yeah, great start, the, the whole bank statements. What about you then, Beth? The role, function, purpose of intention in your life when really it's your your key role as well working with other people yeah i don't think i could separate them by role function purpose and intention and i think the way i view money is also very central to what i think i'm trying to help my clients do with their money which overall is achieve all their goals live the life they want without running out of money before they die um <laughs> Ultimately, it's about money being a tool to make things happen that you want to have happen in your life. And everybody's priorities are different and the actual individual things people want to achieve is different. But that global view is the same pretty much for all of us. We want to get through the rest of our lives without running out of money, but still be able to do the things that matter to us. So money, in a way, has an intention around you helping other people to invest wisely before they die. Yeah, it's a tool for me. Yeah, it's a tool. The function is it's a tool. Purpose is it's a tool. The role, it's a tool. What do you think people's money blockers are then, Beth? What I think a lot of people a lot of people will just put their heads in the sand. They think they're probably not in the position they should be in and they don't want to deal with it. So the easiest thing to do is just not deal with it and leave it for another day. And actually, when you start uncovering things with people, a lot of people are not in as bad a position as they think they are when they actually sit down and look at it. Yeah. Um, I get the fear, though. I do understand why people are a bit scared to start working with somebody like me because they think I'm going to go in and tell them they've done everything wrong because so many of us worry that we don't know enough that we have made mistakes and we don't know how to put them right right so we're going to thank you for that beth so we're going to go to yvonne so yvonne we're oh. looking at um uh discovering and deal with our money blocks looking at these key words role function purpose and intention looking at the role money plays the function it has the purpose it plays and the intention that runs through our lives so We've lost Yvonne again, so we're going to come to you, Miriam. I'm here. Oh, you're here. Oh, we. Uh, I'm here. Okay, you are here. Okay, so uh, would you I like to try to share with us what, how you think about these core words when it comes to dealing with money? I think for me, a little bit like Karen, really, money is security for me, but it's also freedom. Uh, and I am someone who checks my accounts every day. I check my accounts every day just to make sure I'm not being scammed for anything because I'm not trustworthy. I, well, I'm not. I'm trustworthy. I don't trust anybody else. Um, but it gives me choices. Um, and it gives me that freedom to choose what I want to do. So for me, I like to have sufficient to meet my needs, but those extras to give me choices to travel to do things that I want to do and to have fun with the money as well. Mm. We've had some lovely words, you know, we've had loads of lovely words connected with money, safety, freedom, choices. It's a tool, can get us traveling and having fun. God makes mm. you wonder why there are any blockages around it, isn't it? It seems like mm. a really happy place, this money, this money mm. subject. Thank you for that, Yvonne. So coming to you, Amy. So when it comes to money, then, what's the role, function, purpose and intention around money for you? Um, the role, it's two things. It's security, but it's joy as well. Mm. The function, it, it, it's a provider. <laughs> Provides me with what I want. 
purpose? I don't know. And then intention, I've got freedom and security as well. So for me, it does provide security, but provides freedom at the same time. Wonderful. So some of the more lovely words, a provider, it's joy. Thank you for that, Amy. So coming to you, Miriam, what's money for you? Role, function, purpose and intention. Well, I'm going to put a bit of a dampener on it all and say it's quite stressful, really, for us. Um, I don't mean to say that in such a flippant way. We have enough to, its role can be quite stressful. I mean, we have enough so that I am able to try and um, accelerate my business so that I feel extremely lucky and privileged to be able to do that. Um, it's function so that we can pay the mortgage and I can, you know, have the kids can do the clubs that they want to and activities and birthdays and things like that, that they want to do. Um, the purpose, I mean, its purpose is to live and pay the bills, really. Um, and what we are working towards, because I say we, because me and my husband, you know, double, he is amazing at supporting me with my business while I'm trying to get it off the ground. But what I am really working towards is um, him not having to take the full responsibility. And in order for that to happen, I need to make a success of my business, which I feel I'm slowly doing. Fantastic. So would you see there are any blockers connected with what you've just spoken about, Miriam? What, in, in terms of I don't think I deserve it, do you mean? or Yeah, it could be any, any aspect of, you know, what are the blockers to you being able to um, not feel stressed about it? What, so what are the blockers when it comes to the stress part of it? Is it that there's not enough money? Yeah, that's that's it. There's not in, there's not quite enough. Um, but I feel that uh, that because it's a new business and it's taken me a long time to kind of really find where it is that I'm going. Hi, Hi Wes. Um, get one to speak to you about the guest. There we are. We did least. Um, 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 it's not so much a blocker. I don't feel it's a like a subconscious blocker. It's just that where I am in my business. Yeah. Maybe. And how many years in are you to your business? Is it about is it about two, three years? Well, because it's just changed, really. It isn't two years. It's I I think I have really found what it is that I am wanting to do now has only been probably in the last four months, if I'm really honest. Yeah. Because I've seemed to have flailed around a little bit, wanting to be an artist, wanting to do this, wanting to do that. But now I've honed in on what it is that I actually want to do. So it's still early days. And what did this homing in look like and feel like when it came to money? Um, well, it felt good because I'm more focused on what it is that I'm I'm wanting to be doing. Um, it's yeah. I I know that what I have to offer is valuable and can be bringing in bringing me money in I now have to get myself out there a little bit more with the networking events and you know advertising what it is that I actually do now with my case studies and things like that okay Th thank you for sharing that Miriam I'm not going to go to Lisa because it sounds though she's she said she sent a note saying she's busy in the car with her family as well so I'd like us to think about this slide when it comes then to um, how you would then think of money. So if you have to accelerate your business, how would you 
change the role, function, purpose and intention of money in your life? What different role would it play or what behaviours would you have to change in order to accelerate doing what you're doing? So I can remember us talking with Ellen Pridach about this when it comes to um, direct marketing. So if she is to scale up in direct marketing, how would her role need to change? What different role would money need to play in order to accelerate? Uh, what purpose would it have in accelerating the growth of her business? And what, how might that change the intention of the money and in ch change the intention of the business? So it's been really interesting for me, you know, incorporating rapid transformational therapy into what it is that, that I'm doing, working with women in business. And so money is going to play a different role in what I do in that I'll be working with the feelings that money brings up for people in order to help them transition from where they are now to where they need to be and to take away the blockers and to put, to put in place the kind of feelings, motivation, um, inspiration, and it could be some different habits and structures around how they manage their day. You know, the money is, is almost bringing into play a different function and purpose within the business and their intention might change. And so when it comes to your business now, it could be, you know, you have a very, I can remember speaking with Amy when she first started her business, money had a different role, function, purpose and intention to what it has now. Because if we are to accelerate the money coming into Amy's business, we had to change the business model. We had to change how Amy saw her role and the role of the people who worked with her in the, in the business. Her function needed to change and her purpose became more in alignment with who she really is. And her intention is now more aligned to who, you know, the true quality of her as a person in business and money can instigate a new intention for her in her business. So let's go to Amy first, because she's done a massive amount of work, you know, in some ways shifting into a different gear when it comes to how she sees her business rolling forward if she is to accelerate it. Because because Amy could stay stagnant for a long time doing what she was doing. But in order for her to have a true reflection of what she's worth, she needed to up, it's almost like up, not upskill herself because she already had the skills. It was just these skills weren't being used in a way that maximized her skills and, um, the capacity of the business to do what it always could do, but Amy was doing it a different way. So can we come to you, Amy, so you can put yeah. a bit of meat on the bone of this for us? Um, well, yeah, I didn't think I was capable or worthy or good enough <laughs> to do more than just the basics. But um, yeah, it was realising that if I wanted... I had a list in life, um, that for say, and I have a goal and I know what I want to get to. And if I stayed where I was, I never would have. If I didn't start to realise, you know, I was worth more, I guess. <laughs> I never would have got there. And it's just changing my mindset to realise I'm a business owner. I'm a CEO. I'm not a worker. And it's a hard shift. And I still get it wrong some weeks. <laughs> And it's about how how did I want money to play a part in that? And was I going to keep being afraid of it? I was afraid of it. <laughs> um, which seems silly, but I was afraid of what it meant that actually I'd have to get out there. I'd have to be seen. I'd have to do things. So I guess it was 
uh, making peace. <laughs> when you say making peace, making peace with what? With myself, my worth, with money, with, um, yeah, because we've had money in the past and we literally lost the business overnight and lost everything <laughs> just as my son was born. So I guess the worst has happened and we survived and you claw your way out and you, it doesn't mean it's going to happen again. Um, it could, but it's fine, we survived. <laughs> And it could happen again, but unless I took a chance, I'd never know. And Not what's been interesting with you, Amy, is watching you start up the business. <laughs> one of those things, you can work exactly the same hours in that business. Less. With a different strategy and earn less. Or you can work doing the same hours in your business and earn more. Yep. And the only thing that has to shift is you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was a choice then. It was, I could earn a lot of money, but I'd have to exchange a lot of hours for it. And I didn't want to do that because the point of me giving up my last career was to have the time for the children and the potential to earn more. And so like, why did I bother making huge life changes if I wasn't going to go for it? So this is really interesting, you know, especially for somebody like yourself, Miriam, who was just starting up because sometimes we think there's only one way in order to uh, satisfy what you feel your satisfiers need to be but sometimes it's just down to the strategy and going back to what Amy said it's all about how you see this self-worth because you can charge whatever it is per hour but you remember it's remembering you're choosing that you're choosing your hourly rate and you sh you know you're choosing your hourly rate for for what yeah so it's then thinking of okay if I want to accelerate me my business and how much money I bring into the house it shouldn't be about working all the hours under the sun it should be about recognizing you're developing a product that's you know people desire and then charging what the true worth it is with regards to how much you're putting into it as well. So yeah, I think, sorry, Cheryl, I think the biggest thing that you said to me and Beth has said is not just what do I want to charge to get me the monthly income? It's what do I want to charge to get me the future I want? That's great. If I charge what I needed monthly, I was never going to achieve what I wanted to, or the yeah. life, or the, the security. So I was never going to achieve what I needed by charging what was sustain me now. And what that was, was like a little light bulb? <laughs> what made you make that shift from charging less to charging more? Well, and charging what you're truly worth? Well, I want more. I want more for my life, my children. I don't want to survive I don't want to just make ends meet I don't want to think about going out for the day or think about the club or think about if they need new clothes or I don't want to think I want to say yes because I know it's all taken care of that's that's the biggest change for me so a lot of people can think is just you know I'm going to earn more money by seeing more being seen more networking more that's not how you earn more money. You earn more money by stopping and developing a strategy that earns you money. So can you imagine, you know, I see so many people out network and they're really busy networking, but they're still not making money. Yeah. So it's so critical. It's because this is about you. It's deciding, you know, how you're going to dress up your offering when you take it out. You know, it's pointless taking it out in shabby clothes, almost like selling a poor product. Mm. But if you enrich that product and you put the true value on that product, when you take it out, it's going to make you more. So you, you you do less networking because you're actually earning more money. Yeah. So it's actually, you know, the money itself creates a different role of function, purpose and intention, especially when you're accelerating. 
And uh, I can remember, you know, my, my bank manager, when I first set up in business, he said, well, how do you ever intend to grow? And I said, because he said, it's only you. This is when I, when I was in fashion design. And he, I said, oh, yeah. So I said, well, I'm just going to have to charge more for what I do. And he said, yeah, exactly. That's the only way you can grow. If it is only you, the only mm -hmm. way you can grow is to charge more for what you do by having a really fantastic strategy. Because, you know, a lot of us want to achieve certain goals in our lives. And we can only do that by charging more for what we do because we're adding more value into it so we're going to come to you Beth what would you like to add into this topic if we're talking about business acceleration and the role function purpose and intention that money plays there's a difference between people whose business is a product and whose is a service as well yeah. um, the key thing I think is work backwards work out what you need to have coming in and then what you need to do to achieve that and if the prices you're charging aren't getting you there you increase your prices or then you need to have a rethink one of the things i've just learned to do that's really really good for people is i can now build a cash flow model so we can look at what you've got now in place and is that working for you going forward and we can do what if scenario planning so we could build a cash flow model and if it shows actually you're not going to be able to retire at a reasonable age. Then we can look at, right, what do you need to change to do that? And I think if you can get that vision of what your position really is, you can then see where you need to make changes. And it, it's quite hard to accept that you may need to make changes, um, be that in your business charging or in your personal finances. But I do think the key thing is you've got to put numbers on things and know where you're trying to go yeah. to be able to make any rational, educated decisions. Yeah. And it was really interesting this morning on LinkedIn, Stephen Bartlett put out a, a post saying why startups fail. And he says one of the main reasons that startups fail is that they underinvest in their business at the beginning. So they start their business on an underinvestment. So they don't have the money to accelerate their business. And then they wonder why their business isn't taking off. But it's because there wasn't enough of, it's almost like as though you've got a car, but you've never put any fuel in it. And you're beating the car up to go faster and faster. And the car just doesn't have the fuel in it. So it's really important. You start thinking about, you know, this business, it's almost like a baby. It needs feeding. So what resources have you got there that you're going to feed this baby? How are you going to nurture it? You know, what vision do you have for this baby's future? And let's be clear about funding the vision of how your business goes forward, as opposed to just ignoring it. Imagine, you know, what a business looks like if you're just constantly ignoring it, compared with nurturing it and giving it the right resources it needs to grow in a really healthy way. So I'm going to come to you, Yvonne, because you're in direct marketing. So if you were to accelerate in, in the role of direct marketing, how could people do this? What role would money have with regards to the role, function, purpose and intention to get people, you know, accelerated in direct marketing? Okay, for me, it's for me, I know how much the profit, for example, thinking about my products, I know the profit on each of those products. So if I know how much I want to earn in a month, I know how much product I've got to shift. And for me, it's, I have changed my focus on what products I shift. Because there are some products that are higher income producing than others. So those are the ones I focus on now rather than the lower ones. I think, oh, they're cheaper, so people will buy them. That's great, but I've got to shift said loads of those to make what I want. Whereas with some of the higher-end products, yes, they're more expensive, but I don't need to shift so much to make the same amount of money. So it's about using my time a bit more wisely, really. And again, with the courses that I run, it's about thinking – um, if I get these as sort of pay-per-view courses, then it, they're much more productive than me doing them face-to-face -face, because I can actually reach more people that way. So it's about thinking about 
how to leverage your time more wisely. That's, that's a great pointers there. There's some really great pointers because so many of us, when we're running a small business, will think, I've got an idea, and then we end up di getting distracted by a new idea as opposed to concentrating. Margaret Co Carter calls it, concentrate on the knitting. So she says, you know, why are you taking your eye off the ball of the knitting? This is the knitting. You should keep doing the knitting because this is the stuff that earns you the money. Okay, do the other things, but it's only after you've done your knitting. And he's getting that pattern right and getting that pattern profitable for you, you know, as opposed to going rogue with a, with your knitting needles and a ball of wool. So coming to you then, Karen, how could you change in order to accelerate the role, function, purpose and intention of money when you're thinking money brings you in safety? So how would you remain keeping this feeling of safety running through your business acceleration? I think for me, what I had written down was that um, I basically need to make more money to feel a bit safer. And to do that, what I need to do is basically be the, the CEO of my own life, but also of my business and treat it as a business, not a hobby. Um, the money will drive um the business itself so if i make more money i can invest more money i can drive more money i can use more money for marketing to get to a bigger audience ultimately my goal is actually to help other people to make money as well um and to enable their financial freedom so it's thinking of it from both sides as well um so what goals do people have that will allow them to make money that i can help them achieve that so that we can both make money and have that win-win. Mm, that's fantastic. That's a really good flip, Karen. Really good flip around of safety. Well done. So Ellen has jo joined us, Ellen. You caught us at the tail end where we're looking at the role, function, purpose of intention of money if we are to accelerate in business. So we'll go to Lynn first and we'll come to you um, shortly after Lynn. So Lynn, over to you. If you are to accelerate this business, what will be yeah. the function, purpose and intention in order to get this acceleration moving? I think I need to look at strategy. I yeah. don't think I've ever really sat down and thought about it. Um, and I certainly haven't invested enough in, in the business, um, as in, you know, advertising, uh, promotions. So I think it's, it's getting a right strategy in place because otherwise my work is going to slow down and eventually stop. Um, because literally I'm just relying on word of mouth at the minute and the odd networking meeting now and again. I'm not even consistent in what networking I'm doing, to be fair. So I need to look at my strategy. And it's really interesting as well, because Karen, you've brought it up and so has Amy. If we were to think about we were the CEO of our business, how yeah. might we feel differently about this business? So as opposed to... Um, you know, not thinking of ourselves or our own strategist, we sometimes perhaps it's about muddling along without a really clear strategy, how to accelerate. Like Beth says, you know, we need to have this vision. We need to break down this vision on a cash flow. How are we going to do it? What are we going to charge? So coming to you then, Ellen, in order to accelerate your business, what role, function, purpose and intention do you think you have to have around money? Oh, well, after our last session, I um, did up my prices a bit. <laughs> I thought, right, this is what works for me and I'm not going to have the fear of doing it anymore. So, um, sorry, I was late, I had a customer. But uh, yeah, for me, I think it's it, I've done... A, a bit of money issue kind of removing the blocks and I know I've got more probably in there that I need to work on with my business I suppose it's having more confidence in in talking about it going into creating talks creating webinars being more visible I think out there putting myself out there more is the way forward for me 
So what did it take for you to increase your prices? And what has happened in the business since you increased your prices? Have you lost business? Have you improved business? Has it stayed the same? What has happened since you had that confidence to up your prices? Um, well, I've got two new clients, uh, which is brilliant. <laughs> um, I think it gives me more confidence as well, you know, in my in what I'm offering um by asking for a price that i i feel comfortable with asking and feeling i can give my whole value in it by asking those prices because if you're feeling you're not asking enough i feel then maybe it'll build resentment over time that you're doing all this work and then not you're not having the money at the end of the month that you're wanted in your bank accounts so when you charge a good price I think then you're like right I want to give them as much as I can and if there's more positive energy behind that I think I don't know mm. because money is energy isn't it it's an yeah, energy it is. It is. you know you're putting out an offer and that has an energy and that energy has a value and then that person is making a purchase based on that positive energy and confidence. And then the transaction happens. And as you say, you feel as though you're giving your best and wanting to do your best. So, of course, it's going to be amazing energy in that whole them paying for it and being happy and paying for it. So I just thought it's, I think it's really interesting to start thinking about, you know, us being the CEO of our businesses and money has a role, function, purpose and intention to accelerate our growth. And if we are to grow and we all want to grow, so we all need to think about, OK, I'm the CEO of this business. Money has a role, function, purpose and intention for good in my life. It's an energy how can I now accelerate all the emotions and energy connected with driving forward? And really, that's what manifesting is all about, isn't it? We're actually putting out amazing energy with an expectation that amazing energy is going to come back and money is going to flow back to us. But if we're confused, the confusion causes a block. So it is about us taking away those blockages and then having far more confidence in how we actually put this out there with an expectation that it's all a good intention and, and it's going to flow back. And, uh, and I'm sure Beth can give us a lot more technical stuff on all of this as far as, yeah, we need to have a vision and we need to have a very clear strategy and cash flows about how all this happens because the closer we can get to making that vision real and realizable the more aligned we're going to be and the more it's going to happen so we're up to eleven fifty three. i would love to know what you've got out of this session and uh, how are you going to put it to work in your business what have you learned and how are you going to put it to work in your business or perhaps even those you're advising so we're going to come to you beth what have you got out of this morning's session I think it's reassured me that the things I think are important to people, which are safety and freedom from their money, are actually the priorities yeah. that most people have. Um, I think the the biggest thing is getting people to take the time to stop and look at this. And fear is that that big thing. But people do ultimately just want to be safe and they want the freedom to choose what they're going to do with their time and the rest of their lives. So it's kind of reassuring for me that what I think is going on in the world does seem to be what's going on with people. I have this vision, you know, around people reaching a crossroads. And I find very few people in business stop at a crossroads before making a decision. Whereas every day in everyday life, people will stop at the end of the day and watch telly. And you think, hang on, if you've got the time to stop and watch telly, can't you just stop and take a look at your business and think of it as a crossroads and think, oh, I'm not going to put the telly on tonight. I'm going to spend an hour just being CEO of my business and coming up with a really smart strategy for me to accelerate in business. Yeah. So over to you, Yvonne. What have you 
got out of this morning session? What might you put to work? I'm on my phone today and my mute is not working. All right. <laughs> we can hear you. So what would you put? You can't to hear work? me. What I've learned today really is what I just needed to be reminded of is what something that Karen said to treat it as a business, not a hobby. Yeah. And I think sometimes we get carried away thinking, oh, this is a lovely little sideline. Actually, no, this is a business. Um, and I need to just focus on what I need to promote to who, how I'm going to do it to maximize that potential, really. Yeah, because you've only got so much time you pump into a business or pump into yeah. a hobby. So why not make more money out of it? Yeah. Fantastic. Coming to you, Karen, what have you got out of this session? What will you do? I think it is that whole treating it as a CEO, but also I'm going to have a bit of fun with it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to set some money goals and just put it out there that I want to achieve X, Y, and Z and see what I can create and what I can generate and just play with it. You know, see if I can raise a thousand pounds this week just to pay off the lawnmower man. Um, see if I can pay... Yeah, you know, fifteen hundred next week because I need to pay X Y Z bills, and just see what offers I can come up with. There was a really good book, and I can't remember who wrote it, but it was around making offers that people feel stupid saying no to. Um, so it's packaging everything up so that they get a huge, huge amount of value, but you also get some money. So some of the stuff that I have around like online courses that wouldn't actually cost me anything in time, but could actually be bundled up to create really, really cool offers um, would be something that I, I sort of try and do and maybe send out a link to my list and just say, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is my reasoning for it. I've got a huge bill, I need to pay it. Um, but this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I'm wrapping up in there to give you a huge amount of value, but also for me to get this bill paid. That's fantastic. It reminds me when I wanted to buy this house and logically it wouldn't happen because I had to raise 27,000 in about, ooh, I think it was about, the first one thing I had to raise was 17,000 in a month. And then the next thing I had to raise was about another 27,000 in five months. And logically I couldn't do it. I thought I want to do it and I need to do it. So how could I do it? I just manifested it and money came from everywhere because I had this intention uh, that I was going to get it. And so it was things like, I, I, you know, the universe says you've got to do what you can do. So we, me and Lady, the dog, had a budget of £50 a week for food. I think she I think she ate better than I did but you know I had this intention I was going to give myself 50 pound a week for food because everything else had to go into paying for the 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 deposit for the house and so and did we do it yeah we did and I hit my target and then I had another word saying I really need some money in the pot to start working on it straight away can I manifest another eight thousand please and I did yeah so I know it sounds crazy, but I think once you have a very clear intention, the universe works with you. Energetically, things work for you and it happens because I couldn't tell you how it happened, but it did because I had this clear intention. Yeah. Just like Karen and I saying about RTT, you know, we said we're going to do this in six months. We did it with a week to spare. It was crazy, you know. Two we're weeks to spare. Oh, sorry? Two, Two weeks. weeks to spare. We're on a list because they're waiting to give us that the qualification. It's funny. It's so crazy. So over to you, Miriam. <laughs> what have you got out of this session and how will you put it to work? Oh, lots. I've got lots. I know I like Karen's idea of having um, money goals. And since last week, I've upped my hourly rate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I have done an awful lot of work. I've just put in a bid for a job, but I don't know whether or not I've got it, but I've put in more um I've put in more money. I've asked for more money, but I haven't been, you know, actually thinking about it all and breaking it down. But I certainly need um 
more planning somehow and strategies in place but I don't really know quite how to do that other than writing my vision boards and my manifestation I mean I do lots of manifestation drawings as well but I worry that I'm not using my time quite constructively enough because I feel I work incredibly hard for a little return at the moment so I that's where I need the planning and strategy in place so but it's been it's been a fantastic um talk this morning so thank you pleasure so I can feel a lunch coming on Miriam you're going to come over here and we're going to have lunch and we're going to have develop a cunning plan together yeah and I can show you this new space on the wall that needs a picture okay coming to you Lynn what have you learned this morning what are you going to do well I'm thinking I should come to lunch too <laughs> I got exactly the same issue as Miriam no it's, it's just I haven't got a clear plan or clear strategy I don't treat myself as the CEO I will watch telly in the evening when I should probably be using that hour to put that plan together but I'm thinking I don't have to put that plan together so I don't get it done. It's just one big vicious circle. So yeah, I need lunch too. Okay, we'll have lunch. We're gonna have <laughs> lunch. Amy, you coming to dinner? No. Oh, it's lunch. It's lunch, not dinner. <laughs> Amy, over to you. What have you got out of the session? What will you put to work? Um I need to write it down. I think I need to get to know my numbers. Because I think I do know, but I'm not 100% clear. So I think I need to work the numbers and then budget. You know exactly where the money's going, what I want gets. Is it getting me where I want to go? Right. And don't forget that I'm not an employee anymore. <laughs> You're a CEO. Yeah, don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So I, can, I think we're going to have a workshop happening then. So perhaps we can do something in Rachel's and in one of her lovely boardrooms there and uh, have lunch brought in. So over to you, Ellen. So share with us, what have you got out of this session? How are you going to put it to work? Same as Amy, I think. Um, writing it all down, knowing exactly where I'm at and having a clear vision of what my exact goals is. Um, and writing it down, isn't it? Making it manifest that I'm putting clear intention into how am I going to achieve it what do I need to do right lovely and Lisa's put in love the idea of a lunch workshop doing it together I think it's all about trusting yeah that's lovely thank you Lisa and looking forward to seeing you soon and sending you lots of love so um I think that's me that said that sorry that oh. was me that said a lunch <laughs> workshop doing it together <laughs> Okay, yeah, that sounds fantastic. So, Beth, I can feel that coming on. Do you? Yeah? So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's get that in the diary. So, thank you, everyone. Uh, great session this morning. Um, I haven't got a clue what we're covering next week. So, what would you like, you know, put a sort of uh, in the chat box? What is it that you feel you could best do with next week? You know, is it on marketing? Is it on doing, how does a cash flow get put together? What is it that people feel they could really do with next Monday? Could be on any topic you like. By next week, Karen and I will both be qualified in our, as RTT therapists. Yes. So uh, we could do a little bit on that if you would like us to do anything that's connected with shifting blockers um so entirely up to you boundaries mine are shocking oh boundaries all right amy tell us about boundaries i have zero <laughs> <laughs> so what boundaries do you need to work on do you think everything this weekend <laughs> i have zero boundaries when it comes to anyone and anything i just go yeah sure and then think oh no, and then try and work it out. So I started reading The Boundary Boss. I only got through the introduction and I've literally gone, yes, 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 I have that problem, I have that problem. <laughs> Boundary, so that's a really yeah. interesting 
interesting one. That's a good one for us to think about. What about you then, Ellen? You've put in money blocks. So what, what does that mean for you? I'd like to remove, um, you know, I read a lot about manifestation and, and stuff. So getting out of the fear when the when you can't see the money coming in and then you're like, oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? And instead of just trusting, letting go, how do you shift that fear from taking over every time? And because it always comes in, but you're always in kind of repetition of that ego going straight into fear and straight into catastrophizing. So it's, yeah, any tips on controlling that really and, and allowing it to come in, having massive goals. Right. Believing you can achieve them. Oh, well, we'll have a little conflab amongst ourselves and see what topic we end up with. Boundaries and fears around money and some RTT would be great, says Yvonne. So, uh, yeah, we'll I'll have a word with Karen to see what we can pull together. Perhaps there's an RTT technique that we could use. And if we do one one week and then one another. Uh, and even if we, if we, what we do is explore them with the potential of doing something bigger a bit further down the line. So thank you, everyone. A great session. Wow, we have money now. We have money that's going to offer us safety, freedom, choices. It's a tool that can help people in so many ways. Travel, fun, security. It's a provider. Over to you, Beth, for the last word around money, because you're our money queen. <laughs> I would say don't be scared to spend some time thinking about your money. Talk to your partners. If you have a partner, please make sure you're on the same page so you're all heading in the same direction. But just spend some time thinking about it. Don't keep your head in the sand. That's the key thing to move forward. Fantastic. So thank you, everyone. Have a great week. Enjoy yourselves. Have a party, even if it's you having a party with the CEO of your business, which is you. Have a great time, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.